Hello everyone, Gigabeef here, and today I will be showing you why the SKS is one of the most underrated ranged weapons in Tarkov. Why is it good? Well, in short, it's because it's cheap and it fires 7.62x39, which performs well in PvP, both early and late wipe, with the BP variant meaning that this weapon can scale into the late game well for its price. While 762 NATO is great, the cheaper models like the RFB do have serious recoil so the SKS can actually keep better sight picture between shots. Before we jump into the breakdown, the reason why we even want to mod the SKS in the first place rather than something like the AKM comes down to its recoil profile. When being used as a DMR, the SKS's dramatic improvement in horizontal recoil can be a benefit as if you're tracking a target over distance, the bounciness of the AKM to the left and the right is one more thing that you're having to compensate for. The SKS on the other hand fires pretty much straight up, which means that the main thing you have to worry about is the vertical, although we pay for that with the lack of a full auto mode. There are two versions, both semi-automatic, which is the regular one, and the OP SKS. These are distinct weapons in Tarkov, with the OP SKS allowing you to mount a scope because of the dovetail on the side, whereas the regular one does not have this. Well, not in the traditional sense anyway. Outside of the very early game, the OP is the one that everyone uses, but if you really wanted to, you can mount a selection of red dots and holographics towards the front of the weapon using the SKS Leapers UTG SOCOM rail on the original SKS. When thinking about your plans for the next wipe, keep the SKS in mind for early play. You buy it at Jaeger 1, can either top load it or get a 20 round mag from Peacekeeper also at level 1, and the PSO 4x scope from Prapor level 1, which makes the SKS an early wipe killing machine at range with PS ammo, which is arguably one of the best bullets in the opening stages of a new patch. The base weapon is 33k from Jaeger as our starting point and you might find it cheaper on the flea but just think very carefully if you really want a low durability one for what ultimately comes to a small discount. The SKS here on the left for example has 4 times worse accuracy than a new one and will also jam more so the choice is yours. There are 3 broad ways to build the SKS, the hyper budget version without changing over the stock, using the Fab Defense UAS and finally the Tapco Intrafuse version. First let's look at muzzles because this is the same for all of them. Of the muzzle brakes and compensators the SRVV is best for recoil and at 7k from Mechanic 3 is pretty cheap. The Zenit DTK1 is the next best from Skier 2. For either of these you'll need the SKS 762x39 weapon tuning thread adapter for 2k from Jaeger 2. The Hexagon is the best suppressor, usually between 30k to 40k on the flea market and 50k on Skier 3. Alternatively, for one less ergonomics you can use the Zenit DTK4M instead if the hexagon is expensive at the time. But the best vertical that you'll get onto the bare bones version is 126 and 138 suppressed. Stepping up to the UAS build instead, we can get this stock for 23k from Skier 3, spending 7k again from Skier 3 for the SKS VZ58 grip, and adding on the base weapon this comes to 63,000 rubles. Altogether, this gets the UAS build to 84 recoil and 64 ergonomics unsuppressed, and suppressed this is 96 recoil and 45 ergo instead. We'll come back to this build in a moment using a little trick. The lowest recoil possible is using the Tapco. 10k for the Tapco stock from Mechanic 2, 2k for the Tapco buffer tube which is also from Mechanic 2, $51 for the saw pistol grip from Peacekeeper 2 which is the only one you can use here, and then you have a choice between lots of different attachments for the actual buttstock. As usual, $141 for any of the MOE carbine stocks plus the recoil pad is the best, needing Peacekeeper 3. But for two recoil and one ergo worse, you can use the Chris Defiance instead, which at $80 at Peacekeeper 2 is nearly half the price. The benefit of the Tapco is that you can add a foregrip here. The max recoil reduction that you can get out of this is another 7 with the RK2, but given this is never really worth it with the ergo that we get, we usually swap this out to the RVG from Peacekeeper 3 at $83 instead for best bang for buck overall. But the lowest recoil model here is 75 recoil and 66 ergonomics. May I just point out though that it is possible to add the NSPU night scope to get 66 vertical with a canted so you can actually use it but we have done this before using the AKMN which you can see here and it's firmly into meme territory so I don't recommend that unless you just want to have a mess around. The RVG version using the Chris gets to 80 recoil and 79 ergonomics for about 75k unsuppressed. In my opinion, it is just too expensive to make the lowest recoil version, especially if you use a suppressor, which is another 20 to 30k on top. 
Plus, we're only talking about 9 recoil points between the two optimised builds, which, when semi-auto, it doesn't matter as much up in the 80s of recoil. The only thing I will say justifying the Tapco is the ability to add a foregrip, which does help with ergonomics when using the hexagon. Even using the cheaper build, you end up at 60 ergo before optics and mags, which is a nice place to begin. However, there is another way to build the SKS. It doesn't get you to the best recoil overall because it's not the Tapco, but it can be very cost effective, and that is the 3 weapons part barter on Mechanic 2. This version is the UAS, and it comes with the good pistol grip, which, by the way, is on par with the RK3, and it skips having to buy the base SKS and the stock as well. Sometimes you can simply buy the weapons parts on the flea, but this depends. The value of the trade is 62k, as we saw before when we built it from scratch, so anything under 20k is a discount. There's a couple of other ways to get these weapons parts too, using the workbench crafts. You can turn a regular SKS into one weapons part, and a VPO 209, which is the 366 caliber rifle, into two weapons parts. These used to not be very good, but now that the multi-tool returns to you afterwards, it's much better value than it once was. The SKS one usually doesn't help because they're normally not that cheap, but 209s on the flea tend to get bought up really quickly if they're good value for this reason. A certain way to get this done is to buy the mechanic base model, make sure that you remove your filters so you can see it. Because it isn't functional, it won't let you use it in the craft, so you need to add an Ultimac handguard and gas block combo and a pistol grip. Then the workbench will accept it for producing the weapons parts. Another alternative is possible to find them on fence sometimes at 20k or so, which is a little cheaper still, and comes out to about 10,000 per weapons part produced. That said, for the small potential cost saving of up to 10k-ish per weapons part versus just buying all the stuff outright, you give up the opportunity to run something like the Wirescraft instead, which can be insanely profitable at times. Especially now towards the end of the wipe with the market all over the place, this run made 100k or so even with power cords at 20k rubles. With that money, you can just buy the weapons parts or the attachments, whichever is better at the time. Never underestimate your opportunity cost. Once you've settled on a weapon, it's time for mags and optics. The standard magazine for the SKS is only 10 rounds and is internal, requiring the user to top load the weapon by hand, one round at a time from the ammo in your pockets. You can do this if you're dead committed to min-maxing your loadout with loose BP rounds, but usually players will use the 20 round detachables from Peacekeeper 1, although at $81 this is approximately 10k a pop and they are pretty expensive for a budget gun. You will get them back most of the time though if you do lose them, and they hit your ergo by 4 points versus the original. Even more expensive are the 35 rounders from Peacekeeper 4. These take ergo down by 6 points over the original mag, and at $169, which is about 21k, these are even more expensive. Finally, there is a new addition for the SKS, which is the 75 round drum. At 30k from Mechanic 3, this could be kind of funny, but hurts ergo by 16, which is getting to be quite a lot. It's a bit overkill for a semi-auto weapon like the SKS, but I'm sure there are some enjoyers out there. For most players, the 20 rounders will be the best option. You can still top load into these by the way, if you only have one and you have loose rounds in your pocket. Optics wise, we can use the dovetail mount for any version of the OP SKS. We can take one of the dedicated scopes like the PSO, or use either the Cobra or Pilad mounts to get a rail that is much more general. These are about the same price at just over 5k, and the Cobra is basically just better. One less ergo removed, found on Jaeger 1, and it also has the ability to add a flashlight or a laser along the left hand side of the mount. That's not really necessary on this build, but it is useful elsewhere on weapons like the Hunter. One little quirk is that it can't take the NC Star P4 sniper scope, although this one is a rare sight, and also the UTG 25mm rings don't fit either, although again this is no big shame because the Pilad scope that goes onto this sucks. But you might be thinking, well this is rubbish because I can't use any of the ring optics like the TAC-30 or the Voodoo, but here's where the trick comes in. You can mount the LaRue Picatinny riser from Mechanic 2 for 3k, which does then allow you to attach the full complement of ring mounts afterwards. For this weapon, I'd probably use the TAC-30 because it fits well with the overall price bracket and is easily accessible at 33k from Jaeger 2 after his quest The Hermit. This entire build is 133,000 rubles, buying the parts as standard, with mags and optics, which is pretty good, running loud for a little bit more ergo. However, it can be closer to 110k if you get a good price on the weapons parts barter. Obviously, you can also spend a little bit more and run it suppressed too if you want to. If you're going to all this trouble to build the SKS towards the end of the wipe, I'd really be using BP rounds, either from Prapor once you've done Punisher 5, 
crafted at the Workbench 3 or looted from rogues, raiders and bosses. These will 2 tap every class 4, can 2 or 3 tap class 5 armour unless you're really unlucky and will pretty much one shot every helmet that isn't an ult in. To save money you can stack PS underneath in your mags but I personally would not count on PS itself to do the job late because with only 32 pen it needs a few shots to start getting through class 4 which pretty much everyone is wearing now. If after all this you still want something with a full auto option in the 7.62x39 caliber, check out this video where I show you how to make one of the most cost effective AKM builds in the game using the underrated Troy handguard trick. As usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video and as always, have fun in your raids.